Everybody, welcome to Monday Morning Manor. Today we're going to be discussing godly purpose. And before we begin, I'd like us to pray. By the name of Jesus, I pray that everybody watching helps to understand the importance of their godly purpose, Lord, and that they that you have a plan for everybody as to why you put them on this earth, as to what you want them to do, whether that's education, whether that's their jobs, whether that's the gifts that they use to bring other people into the kingdom of God, or to edify others, or to exhort others, Lord show them that through this teaching and how important that is because the only direction that they need is yours the only purpose that they have is for you lord in the name of jesus amen we'll be using the new king james version of the bible but you can use any acceptable version make sure to like share comment and subscribe let's begin So let's turn to Isaiah chapter 43, verses 6 through 7. That's Isaiah chapter 43, verses 6 through 7, and bookmark 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 6 through 7. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him, yes, I have made him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. We are confident, yes, while pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Let's continue on. First Thessalonians chapter four, verses one through two. That's first Thessalonians chapter four, verses one through two. And also bookmark Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 through 21. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 2. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 to 21. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you complete in every good work to do his will working in you what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So the word purpose means a reason for why something is created or why something is done. It's also an, an objective or your intention. Okay, so then godly purpose means the reason for why we are here. We are here to glorify God in everything that we do. That's why we're his people. Just like it said in the scripture in Isaiah chapter 47 that we just read, just like the Israelites were his people, we as believers and disciples are his people now. And so we live for him. We live to glorify him. What does that mean? Living the word, being repentant, okay, serving him serving others that's what all that means and because we're his people we have the holy spirit to help us with all that we have the holy spirit to lead us to repentance to convict us okay we have the holy spirit to help us with everything that we do whether that's in using our spiritual gifts of course most importantly enhancing our natural gifts helping us with the work that we do everything every day helping us with prayer because everything that we do is to glorify him. The jobs that we choose, the way we use our gifts, our spiritual gifts, giving to others, helping others, leading people to him, if he gave us the unction to. Because we all know, as I've said in many, many times in my teachings, we're not assigned to everybody. That's why there's many of us, okay? So that's what godly purpose is. And the way that you find out that purpose is by constantly seeking him and living in him. You must focus on that during your discipleship process. So then he's going to figure out, he's going to tell you what to do. 
Just because you have a Bible and you're a man does not mean that you should be a pastor. People need to understand that may not be God's purpose for you. You need to be called by God to do that. He may be calling you to do something different. It could be that he's calling you to do a particular job and then also have you be a kingdom ambassador. That's a perfect example. Because he has a purpose and a plan for all of his people and how they're going to bring other people to him and how they're going to glorify him by their example. And so it's very important that we listen to him on that or people who have a godly voice, you know, people who are godly, whether that's a real pastor, okay, a prophet or a prophetess or whoever, that can lead you right down the right path because, you know, they are giving you a good interpretation of God's word in order to lead you there. Okay, let's continue. Let's turn to Romans chapter 8 verses 29 through 30. That's Romans chapter 8 verses 29 through 30. And also bookmark Romans chapter 12 verses 1 through 2. Romans chapter 8 verses 29 through 30. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let's continue on Romans chapter 12 verses 9 through 16. That's Romans chapter 12 verses 9 through 16. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality, bless those who persecute you, Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Let's continue on Romans chapter 12, verses 17 through 21. That's Romans chapter 12, verses 17 through 21. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So it's very important for us to glorify God by conforming to the image of Christ. That is our purpose. And what do we do that? And how do we do that? We do that by transforming, by the renewing of our mind. What does that mean? You know, repenting, praying, studying the word, living the word. That's what that means. So that we become more like Christ, actually applying the word to our lives. Many people make this mistake of they go to church, they become a believer according to the church and their church tells them to go and just start spreading the gospel and going to everybody no matter what they face and they call that persecution. No, that is called being antagonistic. You cannot do that. You invite unnecessary warfare and stress to yourself, all right? But that's what we need to be focused on, especially if you are a brand new believer. That should be your number one focus, your relationship with God, becoming more like Jesus Christ. 
And that is a continual process. And how do you do that? Okay, you do that by, like I said, praying, studying the word, repent, being repentant, being respectful to your neighbors, loving your neighbors as yourselves, loving people regardless of whether or not they're believers. We have to love people because that's what Jesus did. Jesus loved people. Even if he did not love their sins, he loved people. And you cannot operate and use any of these gifts really without love. That has to be a part of it. Okay, and then, and if we're serving God, we have to serve with diligence. When I mean serving, I don't just mean using our spiritual gifts and bringing people to the union of God. I also mean when we're working, we have to do that diligently. We have to show that we are children of God, even in our work, even in our work product, even when we're doing housework, we have to show all that. We have to be an example that when other people see us, they will know that we are his children. We don't even have to say a word. Okay, we have to love our enemies as ourselves even and hand our issues over to God with those enemies. Whatever spirits that they have that are oppressing us, hand it over to God because vengeance is his, he's going to repay. We are not to act in the flesh in that. Okay. So, and we have to live peaceably amongst others, not just believers, not just disciples, but even non-believers. We have to do that. That means not invading their space. That means not antagonizing them. Okay? That's what that means. Not being rude and obnoxious. We have to stop doing that if that is what any of us are doing. Because it is going to slow down your transformation process. Because that's not what Jesus was like. He was not antagonistic. Jesus, nor God, or any of the apostles, or anybody in that Bible, notice none of them forced anybody to be believers. None of them forced. Because the belief in God through Jesus Christ has to be genuine. It has to be genuine for it to be real. It has to be in spirit and in truth. So you cannot force it. And once you do that, you've messed up God's plan. You've messed up his purpose for somebody else. Because now they're probably not going to want to receive it because they see the way that you're acting. You're acting more like the enemy than Jesus. Okay? Persecution is when you're sitting and you're reading the Bible or something, and somebody comes and knocks it out of your hand, that's persecution because you did nothing to start it. You didn't start any problems. That sinful spirit in that person just wanted to do that. That's an example. But most of what I see in America is not, that's not what's going on. It's people being antagonistic and, and invading on people's free will, which is something that God gives to everybody. Okay? So... We have to make sure that this is what we're doing, that we're really applying the word to our lives. And even when we're using our spiritual gifts to do it in spirit and in truth and also in love and to give to each other, to help one another. When people are sad, when people in the body of Christ are sad, we have to be sympathetic and empathetic. Even when somebody is not a believer and they're sad, be sim sympathetic and empathetic. You don't even know that that kind of thing being that way can lead that person to God through Jesus Christ, even if they're not a believer. So we have to continue to do all these things to become more like Jesus Christ because Jesus was doing all these things. Jesus kept away from sin. Jesus kept away from fleshly desires. Jesus did not conform to this world. When I mean conform to this world, I mean conforming to sinfulness doesn't mean buying clothes or buying nice things. No, that, I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But that's not what God means by worldly. He means your behavior and your attributes. Is it more like Satan or is it like God? Is it like Jesus? All right, let's continue. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And also bookmark Colossians chapter 3, verses 22 to 24. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Colossians chapter 3 verses 22 to 24. Bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not to men knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. So we glorify God by serving him with our lives. 
okay? He created us in Christ for good works and to represent him. That good works is done through our careers, through us using our spiritual gifts correctly, meaning with spirit and spirit and truth and in love, okay? And glorifying him by our behavior with the fruits that we bear and everything. That's what he wants to see. And if you're working, he wants to see that you're obeying your boss and that you're doing your work heartily. You're doing your work with excellence. And you can always ask him for help with that as well. Because again, even though you may get praise from your coworkers or whoever, the bottom line is, is that you're doing it to glorify God. You are doing it to set an example of God working through you, even with that so-called secular work. Okay, and that's a very powerful thing. And people overlook that. Even if you're a housewife, same thing. You have to do that heartily. You have to do it with joy. And that is hard work. I'm never going to say that it's not. It's very hard work. And it's honorable work. We have to make sure to do that with him in mind. Because you're representing him. And we are representing him in everything that we do. As Christians, when we call ourselves Christians, when we call ourselves believers or disciples. So we want to make sure that we're doing that the best that we can through the power of the Holy Spirit. But once again, we glorify God by serving him with our lives. That is through work, meaning our careers, okay, using our spiritual gifts effectively, and bearing fruit, good fruit. Let's continue. So let's turn to Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 14. That's Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 14. And also bookmark Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 14. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. So also serving others shows our godly purpose. And I mean others meaning everybody, believers, non-believers, it doesn't even matter. You have to help everybody. You know, whether that is using your spiritual gift to edify and exhort somebody, or if you're using it to bring somebody into the kingdom of God, that glorifies God, of course it does. Also giving to a stranger, helping a stranger, whether they are Christian or not, because at the end of the day, that's what it's going to do is going to bring glory to God. The person who is a believer or a disciple is going to be edified. And the person who's not a member of the body of Christ will become a member of the body of Christ eventually just by your actions. And because you did it with the power of the Holy Spirit and you did it in love. Okay. And he gave us freedom, spiritual freedom, meaning that he frees us from the bondage of sin. And he gives us that remedy called repentance, not for us to go back into sin so that's not what the liberty means and he gave us that also to love again others he's very big on this the lord is very big on this okay and then not only that we have to make sure that when we're doing anything that we're not doing it for selfish reasons when we're helping somebody when we're giving to somebody okay when we're using our spiritual gifts is not to glorify ourselves but to glorify God and because God had us do it this is why I'm totally against evangelizing in the flesh when you do that you're messing up his plan you're messing up his purpose for somebody else you're messing up the purposes for yourself and you're leading yourself into a pit of danger I mean lots of spiritual warfare that's why you can't do that you can't use any of these gifts in the flesh you can't serve others in the flesh. You need to do it with the power of God, with the power of the Holy Spirit, and because he sent you to do it. And then it's a net benefit. The benefit is that God is glorified and you're also helping that person. And that person now has a testimony. That's how it goes. It's a continuous cycle if done correctly. 
And so, again, in order to find out what your purpose is, there are things you have to do. You have to study the word. You have to pray. You have to seek God as to what that is. Again, not everybody who has a Bible should be a pastor or evangelist. No, you have to follow his instructions because if you don't, you are ruining your own path and somebody else's. And that does not fulfill his will at all. That's not his will as we see from these scriptures. Okay. And if any of you are having issues with this and trying to figure out what your purpose is, what your path is in life, what your goals are, sort all that out. You can also reach out to us for life coaching as well. And we can help you with that. All right. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Join us next week as we do, as we go over the Jezebelic spirit part two. <laughs> and then after that, we will be doing part two of Godly Purpose. Thank you and have a blessed week.